just want to thank Bertie for his warm words of welcome and for his invitation to come and share my testimony tonight. And I just thank God for a testimony to give and for the truth of those words we have just been singing, I'm only a sinner saved by grace. And every one of us in this gathering tonight that are saved by the grace of God, that's all we are. And we must never forget that. Let's turn to Psalm 32, please, for uh, scripture reading. Psalm 32. Um, we'll just read this psalm together. Psalm 32. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. When I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer, Selah. I acknowledged my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin, Selah. For this shall every one that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of great waters they shall not come nigh unto him. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance, Selah. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Be ye not as the horse or as the mule which hath no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle, lest they come near unto thee. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall compass him about. Be glad in the Lord, and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. Amen. May the Lord add his blessing to that uh, wonderful passage from his word. As I think of the call of God and God's dealings in my life in salvation and in calling me into his work, I can liken it to a jigsaw puzzle where you have many different pieces that go into making up that jigsaw. And no one of those pieces by themselves is the whole picture. And such is my experience tonight as I look back at God's dealings in my life, how he used many different people circumstances and situations to deal with me and to bring me to the point where he has brought me to tonight. And I thank God that it's all his workings in my heart. And as I testify tonight to what God has done for me, I trust that uh, you will see that it is God and God alone who can make us what we are by his grace and his grace alone. You know, I want to say to you at the beginning tonight that I can relate to you, and I'm about to relate to you something of how God saved me and how he called me into his work, I can't tell you how God is going to save you if you're not saved, or how he's going to call you if he's going to call you into his work tonight. My prayer is that even this testimony may be used tonight to uh, speak to some heart, even some young person that even this meeting tonight may hear the call of God as I heard it many years ago and might send you forth into uh, his harvest fields. And how the Lord called me is not necessarily how he will call you, but I trust that he will lay his hand upon some life even here tonight and call them into his work. As I think of salvation in our family, uh, I, as far as I know, salvation came into our family first through my grandmother who was saved under the ministry of the late Boland and Grant. Also, my mother was saved under their ministry as well. My father was saved under the ministry of the Faith Mission. And that's the home and the environment that I was brought up in and born into. The psalmist said, I have a goodly heritage. And I thank God tonight that that is my testimony, that I have a goodly heritage, a grandmother, parents who prayed for me, who brought me up in the ways of the Lord. And I thank God for being brought along to Sunday school, to children's meetings, where I heard the Word of God faithfully preached, 
where we heard the Word of God in our own home as our, as our mother taught it to us uh, night by night around the family altar. And I thank God from a very early age that I knew I needed to be saved. I knew I was a lost sinner. And as young as I was, not having committed any terribly great sins, yet I knew that before God I was a lost, guilty sinner. If I died the way I was, I'll be lost forever. That passage in Roman, uh, sorry, Revelation 20, which describes the great white throne judgment and how all the unsaved will be gathered before that judgment bar of God someday, to hear those awful words, depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire. Folks, that was a scripture and a, a truth that was embedded upon my heart at a very early age. I knew that if I died without Christ, without a saving faith in Him, that I would stand before that judgment bar one day and I would be cast into the lake of fire. Folks, that was the Spirit of God impressing the solemnity of His truth upon my young heart. For a time, even at a young age, I felt a rebellion in my heart against the truth of God and against the gospel. And even though I was very young, I can remember a time when I don't know how long it was, but it was for a period of time that I resisted and rebelled against the truth of God's Word in my heart. But I thank God for His faithful dealings with me, uh, bringing me to the point at an early age where I knelt one day beside my bedside and trusted Christ as my Savior, realizing that He was the only one who could save me, and realizing that I was lost and without Him and absolutely needed Him as my Lord and Savior. And I thank God tonight that I'm saved. I thank God that His grace reached into my heart and into my life and saved me even at an early age. I was brought along to the prayer meeting. You know, we're living in days when there's a culture in, in church and in, in fellowships where young people don't come to the prayer meeting. And folks, that grieves me. I was brought along to the prayer meeting. I'm going to tell you something that I experienced in a prayer meeting one night. And I was just about 10 or 11 years of age. And I trust this will highlight to you as a parent and to you young people the importance of being in the place of prayer. One night sitting in a prayer meeting for 10 or 11 years of age, someone came over to me, prayed with me, and said to me, that God had spoken to them and told them that he had something special for my life. Folks, that was the first conscious awareness that I had of the call of God upon my life. Now, I believe with the Scriptures, like Jeremiah, that those whom God calls, he calls from their mother's womb and thank God for his sovereignty in calling us. But at, in that prayer meeting that night, that was the first conscious awareness that I had that God was calling me and setting my life apart to serve Him. And I thank God for that experience. When I was about 14, as a family, we attended some meetings conducted by the late Mr. Noel Grant. And some of you who are older will know uh, Noel Grant. And you know how faithful he was in challenging God's people about their walk with him, challenging God's people to go through with God, to lay their all upon the altar. It was he who penned those words, go through with God, thy vows to pay, thine all upon the altar lay, the Holy Ghost will do the rest and give to thee God's very best. And in those meetings, they were being conducted not too far from here in the Diamond Orange Hall. God spoke into my life once again. And God challenged me about my walk with Him. Challenged me that it wasn't enough just to be coming along to church, going through the motions of being a Christian, but that there was so much more that He wanted with this life of mine. There were depths that He wanted me to experience of Himself that I had never known before. And in those meetings, I surrendered to the Lord and came into a new place in my walk with Him. The Lord gave me a love for Himself, a love for the souls of men and women who were lost around me. 
He gave me a love for his word. I remember starting to buy commentaries and books and uh, wanting to study the word of God and wanting to get into it. And folks, God gave me a love for his word that I have to this very day. There's one person in my life that I really thank God for, and that is my mother. I had a godly mother who prayed for us, who brought us up in the fear of the Lord. Mother who stood with us in all the years that we were serving Him. It's about 10 years ago when the Lord was pleased to call her home to be with Himself. But my mother, back then, as a young teenager, and what God had done in my life, being the godly woman that she was, she recognized what God was doing in my life. Do you know what she bought me for my 16th birthday? She bought me a set of Matthew Henry's commentaries. Now, some of you young people, if your mother were to buy you a set of commentaries, you'd take a look at her. You would think she was mad. You'd be wanting a tablet or something else. But that's what my mother bought me for my 16th birthday. And that was because she realized that God had done something in my life that he had given me a love for his word and she was seeking to encourage me in that. Thank God for such a memory. As I was going up through church, I remember hearing missionaries uh, coming along and speaking of the needs of the mission field. I remember coming across some old tracts that my grandmother had, who had at this, by this stage had passed on to glory. Some old tracts that she had from every home crusade. And I found them, come across them, and I started reading some of these, and I discovered some very challenging uh, tracts that were written concerning the needs of the mission field that there were so many people groups around the world and so many that still had never heard the gospel, that there were still so many language groups around the world that did not have a copy of the Word of God in their own language. And folks, there was born within my heart a real desire to one day translate the Word of God into another language. Now, back then, I didn't know where that would be, how that would work out, or anything like that. But all I can testify to is this, that the Lord put that longing, that desire within my heart, even as a teenager, to give my life, to see the gospel go forth to people that had never heard it, and to translate the Scriptures into uh, another language so that people who didn't have the Word of God for themselves could have it in their own mother tongue. So I knew that God was calling me. But it was a matter of waiting upon the Lord's time. And you know, sometimes the Lord's not in a hurry. I left school at 16. My mother didn't keep that well on it at that time, and I was needed at home on the farm. I worked at home on the farm for six years. And all of that time, knowing myself, my family, knowing that God was calling me and that one day I would be in his work. And you know, my father, as he worked the farm there, knew that I wouldn't always be there on the farm. He knew that God was calling me. My family and others around me knew it. Because, folks, when God does a work within your heart, when God lays his hand upon you, when God calls you, people around, it will, around you will know it. It cannot be hid. Thank God for his work within my heart at that time. The Lord gave me a promise, and I read it to you tonight as in verse 8 there of Psalm 32, where the psalmist says, I will instruct thee and teach thee, as God speaking here, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go, I will guide thee with mine eyes. And folks, that is a promise from the Lord that he will guide us, that he will direct us. You know, sometimes in seeking the Lord's guidance in a particular matter, or even as young people, as you seek God's will for your life and the course that the Lord would have for your life to take, you know, sometimes it's not always an easy matter to discern the will of God. And yet, folks, we need to remember that God has promised here, and this is a precious promise the Lord gave to me, where he says, I will teach thee and instruct thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Folks, God has promised that he will. And so often over the years in particular situations where we haven't known which way to turn, and at times you wonder what is the, what is the way to go. Folks, over and over again we have proven that as we have 
laid it before the Lord as we have went in perhaps the way that we have felt was the way the Lord was leading. Sometimes the Lord has closed doors and opened other doors. Because you see, he is faithful to guide. And we don't need to make the matter of guidance any more complicated than it is. I'm not saying that it's easy to discern the will of God. Sometimes God does test us and leaves us where uh, he wants us just to trust him to, to lead us and to guide us, even though, like Abraham, we go out not knowing where we're going. But folks, he is faithful, and this is the promise that he gave to us, that he will lead us, guide us, and direct us. In September of 94, I believe it was the first missionary convention here in the lifeboat over in the other building there. We came along. It was a Saturday afternoon. Tommy Shaw was speaking that day on that verse in the Gospels about the fields being white unto harvest and the laborers being so few. And I remember well that afternoon, there was a real sense of God in that meeting. God was speaking. And God was challenging afresh about the need of the mission field as God's servant was uh, describing different needs around the mission fields of the world, tremendous need for laborers to go forth into the harvest fields. God spoke to me over there that afternoon and said to me, now's the time that I want you to go into my work. And folks, that was so clear a confirmation of all that God already had done. Do you see all the pieces of the jigsaw puzzle that are fitting in here to make up the whole picture? Different situations, different circumstances, different servants of God. But God working through it all to take my life and to use it for his honor and for his glory. And so in September 95, I found myself in the Faith Mission Bible College. always felt that that was a good place to just to get training and to get experience in the work of God. We spent two years there in the college and then two years in the work of uh, the mission there. Um, we praise God for those years of experience that he gave to us during that time and being under other servants of God and getting experience in, in ministry and preaching and uh, sharing the gospel. And we praise God for his hand upon us even during that time. You know, after I was in the mission for a couple of years and we were still seeking the Lord, there was still that desire within my heart that the Lord had given us back as a teenager to go to the mission field, to translate the scriptures. That was still very real upon my heart. But being involved in ministry here at home, I, I come to the point where I began to wonder really where the Lord was, was leading us and what was his, his will for uh, my life. I remember going at that time to a servant of God and just to seek some advice and to ask him just to, to give us some godly advice and wisdom and as we found ourselves in this situation. And again, folks, that was another piece in the jigsaw puzzle where God used this servant of his to help me as I sought to discern the will of God for my life. I'm not saying that every time you have a matter of guidance, you should be running to your pastor, to the preacher. I'm not saying that. That was the only time in all my life that I ever went to a servant of God to seek advice in, in, in a matter like that. But God used that uh, to continue to work in our hearts, to confirm his will, and to send us forth to where he wanted us to go. Before I went into the, the faith mission, I had met Rachel, and as I looked and I sought uh, the God's will for my life and for the future and for uh, a marriage partner, I really wanted someone who loved the Lord, someone who desired the will of God for their lives, someone who would be a help me to me as we sought to follow the will of God. And I thank God that he led me to Rachel and gave me a godly wife that has not only been a support to me over the years, but has been also a vital part of the ministry that God gave to us. It hasn't been me and her in the background, but it has been us both working together as God called us together. She was saved about 10 years of age at a CEF camp and also felt the call of God upon her life to serve him. 
And I praise God for bringing our lives together and for the tremendous blessing that she has been to me and together how the Lord has used us over the years. And I thank God for giving us uh, two lovely children as well, Daniel and Rebecca. And do pray for us and pray for every parent in these days seeking to bring up children. Folks, we are facing issues. Our young people are facing issues that we didn't face when we were at school and growing up. Christian parents are facing issues in raising their children, seeking to bring them up in the ways of the Lord that they've never faced before and how we need the prayers of God's people. Maybe your families grew up, but please remember those who have younger families as we seek to raise our children that God might put his hand upon them, shield and protect them from the evils that they're facing in school, the pressures that they're under, the anti-God uh, things that are against them day by day as they, as they face the world. Pray that the Lord may keep his hand upon them, save them, and lead them on with himself. And thank God for saving both of our children. And we'd ask you to pray that the Lord would encourage and bless them and lead them on with himself. When Rachel and I came together, the Lord, as we sought the Lord for his will for our lives, we began to look into different mission organizations. And as we looked at New Tribes Mission, we realized that their goal in seeking to reach unreached people groups around the world to translate the scriptures into their language, that, that was exactly the work that the Lord had laid upon our hearts all those years ago. And so we found the Lord leading us into the work of New Tribes Mission. We trained for two years after we were married over in the States. During that time, New Tribes Mission is quite a large mission, works in a lot of different countries around the world. And we were looking to the Lord to guide us as to where he would have us to serve him, where he would have us to go. And we found the Lord leading us to the land of the Ivory Coast in West Africa. We believe that this is where the Lord would, was leading us and where he would have us to go. When we finished the training, we came home. We were planning to go there in September of 2002. But then Daniel decided to come along and throw a spanner in the works. And so that delayed us for a few months. It delayed us. Then we were making our plans for November of 2002. In September of that year, some of you may remember, a civil war broke out very unexpectedly in the land of the Ivory Coast. As we look back at that time, we really thank God for his hand upon us that we hadn't just arrived out there whenever that whole thing uh, erupted. We praise God for uh, directing even our lives that we weren't out there in that land at that time. So we found the Lord leading us then to uh, go over to France to study French as we, at that point, the mission weren't sure if things were going to open up again in the Ivory Coast or not. And we needed to learn French as it's the national language of all of those West African countries. During that time, six months over there in Paris, we uh, were praying and asking God to very definitely show us if, if the Ivory Coast was going to open up again or if it was going to be a closed door. And then the mission contacted us and said to us that we needed to look elsewhere because things weren't looking good and that missionaries couldn't go there at that time. As we prayed about it, where the Lord would have us to go, the Lord brought before us the experience of the Apostle Paul in Acts 16. You will know that passage where Paul sought to go into two different places with the gospel, into Asia and into Bithynia. We're told that the Spirit suffered them not, that the Spirit forbade them to preach in those places. And then it was after that that Paul received the Macedonian call, hearing that call to come over and help us. And we felt that the Lord was calling us to the neighboring country of Guinea, a country that neighbored the Ivory Coast. And that was how the Lord led us and directed us to the land of Guinea. When we finished our uh, French training there in, in, in Paris, we went straight over for a couple of weeks to uh, Guinea just to meet the missionaries and to visit around some of the uh, different works where the missionaries were working. We visited a number of different villages where, where missionaries were working at that time. 
Whenever we went to the village of Kefinda, where the Baga people are living, there was something that just resonated in our hearts that this is where the Lord would have us to be. And we thank God for just giving us that leading, directing to the Baga people there of West Africa, whom we have had the privilege of being able to labor amongst for uh, 13 years now. Um, we praise God for the privilege that He has given us as a family to reach this unreached people with the gospel. Folks, that has been a tremendous privilege. Has it been easy? No, it hasn't. I could tell you many difficult experiences that we have went through, times when you wonder, what are you doing here? And yet, through it all, the tremendous privilege joy of being able to give our lives to see the gospel go forth to a people group that have never heard it before. People that were living in total spiritual darkness without the light of God's Word, giving us the tremendous privilege of being able to share the message of the gospel with them, and now to be involved in translating the Word of God into their own mother tongue. We praise God for what He has done. We give Him the glory for what He has done through our lives. Folks, it is His work. We are con more conscious of that than ever before. It's His work. It's nothing to do with us. He's the one who's building His church. He's the one who came to His disciples there after His resurrection, saying to them, all power in heaven and earth is given unto me. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Folks, He is the risen all-powerful Christ and Savior tonight, the one who has all power within his hands. He's the one who has sent us forth because it's his work. He's building his church. He's calling men and women to himself. And praise God for the privilege that he's given us to be a small part of that. God doesn't need us, but yet he condescends to lay his hand upon our lives to equip us and to send us forth and to use us. Folks, that is humbling. I thank God for what He has done and what He continues to do, and we give Him all the glory. You know, sometimes God does lead through circumstances as well. Whenever we joined the team there in uh, Kefinda with the, the bag of people, we had, uh, the, at that point, Brazilian co-workers and as we shared earlier with you, the, the Lord had given us that real desire to translate the Word of God into another language. Whenever we joined that team, our Brazilian co-worker it was, he was already there a couple of years before us, and he was the one that was going to be involved in the translation work. And it seemed like that was going to be his task. And yet the Lord for reasons known only to him, that family had to come out because of a sickness that his wife got that couldn't be treated there, and they needed to return back to Brazil. And so, through those circumstances, the Lord put this work in my hands of translating the Word of God into this, the language of these people, fulfilling that desire that He had given me as a young teenager. Thank God for His sovereignty in leading us and guiding us, giving us promises over the years, precious promise that He gave us before we went out to Guinea. It was in Isaiah 45, verses 2 and 3, where it says, I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass, cut in sunder the bars of iron, and I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places. Folks, that has been a precious promise that has enabled us to thick and thin, to uh, hold on and to keep going and to keep our eyes upon the Lord and to uh, just to count upon His faithfulness to fulfill His promise, to break in pieces the gates of brass, to give us the treasures of darkness. I thank God that He's begun to do that there, uh, even amongst the, the bag of people. You know, there are times also that we have faced situations where we have been seeking the Lord's will and the Lord's guidance in a particular matter, and the Lord hasn't given us a promise. And I believe that sometimes God does call us to walk by faith. We don't always have to be like Gideon, putting out our fleece and seeking some confirmation. Yes, sometimes God does that, and praise God when He does. 
But there are other times when God asks us to walk in the dark, as it were, to just simply put our hand in His hand and trust Him and walk by faith. And maybe you're facing some situation or maybe God is calling you and maybe you don't have a promise that you can hold on to. Well, God may give you one, but he may ask you to walk by faith and simply trust him. That if he's calling you, if you're hearing his voice, that you'll simply obey and you'll simply follow. Folks, as I finish, it's been a tremendous privilege, tremendous joy in spite of the challenges, the difficulties of serving the Lord overseas, of even this work that we're still involved in in translating the Scriptures into this language, in spite of all these challenges, folks, I can tell you it's worth it all to give your life for the cause of the gospel. When God lays His hand upon your life, oh, folks, there is no greater privilege in all the world. Work thus despised in the eyes of the world tonight, but, folks, the work of proclaiming Christ making Christ known, whether it's here at home or whether it's on the mission field of the world. Folks, there's no greater privilege, no greater joy than to obey the call of God, to be involved in this great work, to make Christ our wonderful Savior known to those that know Him not. And I trust and pray that God might lay His hand upon some of your life, some of you young people, your life before you, May God lay his hand upon you, even tonight and over these uh, nights of testimony here. May God send you forth. Oh, there's a great need for laborers in the mission field of the world tonight. Still so many that need to hear of Christ. Will you give your life tonight if God is speaking to you? Don't resist his call. Lay your life upon the altar. Go through with God. Your vows to pay. You're all upon the altar lay. The Holy Ghost will do the rest and give to you God's very best. And on that day when we stand face to face before him and see Christ in all his glory, folks, it will, it will be worth it all.